I go to the cinema for the experience. The huge screen, the surround sound, the big comfy chairs. But it simply wouldn't be the cinema without the films. The adrenaline inducing fist fights of Jason Bourne. The hilarious antics of Jim Carrey. And the sad ending to Forrest Gump. The films are not constrained to the enormousness of the silver screen, but thanks to the invention of the DVD and the iPod, anyone can watch a film wherever they are, whenever they are. Ever since the birth of the film, it has been trying to connect with its audience. Take, for instance, Charlie Chaplin's character of the down and out tramp, who ever since his imagination has been connecting with those struggling 30s workers who could even, in tough economic times, afford to go to the cinema. And we all know what that's like. Thank you very much, Mr. Fred Goodwin. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> anyway, film is the most accessible of the arts. Whether it's on a TV or on an iPad, you can watch a film wherever you are. And considering that every year brings a smaller gadget with a bigger screen, it's important that art can keep up with modern generations and not get left behind. A good example of this is computer-generated images. Before Jurassic Park, computer-generated images were barely used, save for in documentaries. However, since Jurassic Park, it's been seen as a cinematic revelation that has opened the eyes of thousands of viewers to these incredible creatures which we once thought to be extinct. And that is why I love film. It breaks the bonds of reality because of its versatility and adaptableness. That's not a word. <laughs> and that, I believe, is why film should stay in the balloon. Thank you very much for watching. explain the fact that uh, in this year's Oscars, a silent movie carried away the award for Best Actor and a couple other awards. So what's going on? That's because even before computer generation and all of that technical trickery, film has been so perfectly tuned by the writers, the directors, the editors, that any piece of film, if it's good enough, can be made timeless. And that's why I love film because even an old film can still be relevant today. Thank you. Um, does, do you find that when, you, when you're looking at a, a, a generated image, which you know is not a real person, does that, are you able to believe in it in the same way as you would in theatre when you can actually see the human being and on the older films where you knew that that man was saying that at that moment? Well, um, I've been looking and it's quite hard to find a play with a uh, big Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, taking on a pack of Velociraptors in it. But uh, should you find such a production, please uh, send me the website. But, um, no, I, s I see what you mean and um, yes, I agree, but like I said, um, I'm gabbling, I don't really do that. But, um, Computer-generated images allows a different realm to be explored, whereas a film, no, a, a, th a, a play is um, constrained to the theatre and the proscenium arch or the thrust or whatever. However, a film in that screen can be any kind of world the, the director or the writer can imagine. Thank you. Sorry, I've got three words for you. Jar Jar Binks. Yes. <laughs> Ruined. Sorry. Yes, I know. Yes, okay, okay. Indeed. So that's good. So you understand the limitations that CGI can have in movies. Yes. But I don't want to get distracted talking about CGI. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you think the, the with with literature and with music, particularly. There's a huge sort of repeat value. You know, people listen to the same songs over and over again. Yeah. Can the same be said for film? Oh, of course, definitely. I've watched uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of times, <coughs> and it never ceases to amaze me. The fact that dinosaurs, which were just, just an object of my fixation as a childhood, were there eating each other in front of me. I was just like, wow! And 
as a child, I don't, uh, not so much anymore, but I would literally, as a child, I'd watch the same film in a row five times a day, just non stop, just keep going. What did you, you get from those repeat periods? Apart from the dinosaurs and the. The same. The same. The same, you still get the same emotion. For example, every time I watch Forrest Gump, I still cry at the end. I'm not, not ashamed to admit that. I do. <laughs> and at the end of other films, at the end of um, Blood Diamond, when Leonardo DiCaprio's character dies, every time I see that, I cry. At the end of Titanic, when Leonardo DiCaprio's character dies. <laughs> Um, it's 
comedy, it's so many, so many emotions you can feel in theatre which you don't necessarily feel, feel in film and theatre has so many dimensions in just one play, it's not just comedy all the way through for example, although it can be, you have in one film, it's not genres, thriller, action, comedy again. I see, so you say that cinema perhaps is a little too constrained by genre. Yeah, whereas theater and theatre is so much diversity as well, there's so many... Yeah. Can I eat popcorn in the theatre? Yes. I'd pick a mix. Uh, <laughs> 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 Rani, do you use the, the expression uh, epic theatre? Uh, what is your view of, of, of theatre taking place in shopping malls, uh, traffic islands, urban cities, uh, on the high streets of South Philly? Uh, is this also credible theatre? in school <coughs> and um, theatre is accessible anywhere so yeah being on being on a street watching theatre is excellent you're watching theatre still thank you, thank you. Thank you.